Hi there, fellow art nerd. My name is Faye, and today I'm gonna to take you through my process of illustrating a caricature. And my subject is Dr. Martin Luther King. The program I'll be using for this piece is called Medibang Paint Pro. It's a free digital art software with good brushes and a simple interface. I'll link to some resources in the description below. This is my first week trying out the program, so wish me luck. Well, the reason why I chose a gray background is because it's easier to start on gray, in my opinion, than it is to start with white. And that's because when you start with gray, you have a mid-tone, and the mid-tone is really nice to work with. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sketch out a very basic shape. So if I started with the ball and shield, that would be the non-exaggerated version of him, right? So if I draw like a standard ball and shield on a separate layer, like just draw kind of like a basic proportions of a male. If I compare the generic drawing to his actual face, you can see that his head is like, he's kind of got hair that kind of, you know, is, is more square at the top. His neck here is bulging, right? So I might make his neck like super thick. Like he's got like a weird shaped ear. And I might wanna make his nose like super big because if you look, most people's noses are about the width of, their, of the space in between their eyes. I'm gonna bring his center line like higher and I'm gonna make his forehead smaller and I'm gonna make his nose like really big so let's say there's his center line I'm gonna like make his nose so big that it like comes off the page and then I'm gonna make his eyes like super small so you can play around with this sketch. Sometimes um, when you exaggerate, it doesn't always work at first. So if it doesn't look like somebody, then it's okay. You can just erase it and try again. His mouth is also pretty big. So if his mouth and his nose are really big, then I'm gonna make his lower jaw just like bigger. But I do want to exaggerate how the bottom of his face is bigger than the top of his face. So this should be fun. You guys should be like experimenting and seeing where you can exaggerate certain elements. And this is just a sketch, so it can be very rough. And then if I look at his mustache, I'm just gonna kind of draw the shape of his mustache. And I wanna make his mouth really big. Like his, if you look at his lips, right? His lips are probably bigger than average. By average, I just mean like the average ball and shield face. So if I wanna make his mouth really big and I wanna exaggerate the shape of his mouth, I'm going to just like make it bigger than normal. Okay, like really big. And if I make his mouth really big, I've gotta make his chin bigger. To bring his chin a little lower. You can see how this is distorting his face. I think I'm gonna make his ear really small. I think it's smaller than average. I'm just gonna exaggerate and like make his ear really small. And then make his jaw bigger. He actually doesn't have a very big chin and because I gave him a big chin, it's starting to not look like him. So I think in my picture, I made him look kind of smug. He's not known for being smug. He's kind of known for being, you know, a, a dreamer, a leader. I'm gonna change the style of his eyes and see kind of where I keep. I'm gonna make his eyes a little bit more like, more wide-eyed. And now I'm just kind of messing around with the shape. Here I kind of drew it too wide, whereas I think I can elongate it. Or if I, if I elongate it, it might look a little bit better. I went I and I selected the color on his forehead, B. You can see it's like a blue color, right? 
I, the color on the other side of his forehead, B, you can see how light that is. So I'm gonna go and find like I here and look at the dark, almost like the dark greens. You can see right now like this color I actually selected from the side of his face, but it looks much darker because in his picture, th this color looks lighter because it's next to dark. Whereas on my background, my background is lighter and this looks a lot darker. So you can see that the same color is going to appear differently depending on what's around it. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of time and just kind of examine the colors. It's always hard to choose the colors when you can just use the eyedropper tool. Um, as a beginner, you can just select that. There's nothing wrong with that. One of the tools of digital art is the eyedropper tool. Once you have those colors selected, we're gonna use like an average color here. So I'm going to go I, and I'm gonna use like this color. And I'm gonna start by giving my entire piece this one color. And then I'm gonna go with my darkest darks and I'm gonna start, and I usually do the hair on a separate layer because I can then change it or distort it if I want to without it um, being attached to my other layers. So I'm gonna start by adding my darks to my skin tone. And right now everything looks kind of flat, right? But I will go in and add other colors to it, but your first step is sort of find your average color and then go in with your brush and start to add in some of the darks. You wanna be able to have uh, your values set before you go too heavy into color. Okay, so I did his hair on a separate layer, so I'm gonna rename this hair. Usually I'll do one layer for the base. So this is my base layer. And then I'm gonna do one layer for my color. So I'm gonna go. Kind of adding in these blue tones um, and I'm doing it with pencil because it's sensitive enough and if I press hard then I get a solid line but if I if I press lightly I get like a blurry line and I'm trying to go in the direction of my form right so I'm gonna essentially I'm coloring like I'm cross hatching so you can see on people with darker skin tones you can get really colorful I'm gonna add some like greenish grays around the hair. And there's lots of green tones around eyebrows as well. Like eyebrows and beards are all kind of greenish. If I ever want to use like a darker version of the highlight color, I can just go in and drag it down on this value scale. So here I'm kind of going in with a transparent color and I'm kind of changing my direction of my brush and doing these little swirls, which I think look kind of fun. If I zoom in on him, you can really see my brush strokes. So see how my brush strokes are kind of following the form? Um, if I wanted to go in, I can kind of blend everything. So if I use my blur tool, I can kind of blur all of my colors together. You can also use the smudge tool. So the smudge tool is kind of cool. The smudge tool actually moves your colors around. So you can smudge things into each other. So now I'm just kind of like blurring everything, smudging everything, evening it out. And you can see if I take off my sketch layer, <laughs> you can see kind of like the colors are all kind of coming together. His eyes look really weird. 
what you can do, like when you are at the refining stage of your caricature, what you can do is you can turn down the layer opacity. So when I reduce the opacity, I can kind of retrace my lines, but much cleaner, right? So I would reduce your opacity to maybe like 50, 50% 50 or something like that, and then create a new layer. So my drawing, my, my messy drawing was called sketch and my new drawing, I'm going to call it line art. And even though I kind of want this realistic approach or realistic coloring, I kind of want to use some graphic line art to complement that. So where do I want to put the thick lines versus the thin lines? So this is kind of a decision that a lot of illustrators have to make. If you draw your lines just kind of the same all the way around, like if I just kind of like put a dark line kind of all the way around him, it starts to look cartoony, right? Whereas if I kind of put a line and I make my line sort of thick on one side and thin on the other side like this, like thick to thin, and then maybe a little bit here, it gets a little thicker here, and then over here it gets a little bit thicker. I'm just going to emphasize the parts of the line that are in shadow or bone. So you want to use line variety as much as you can. Thin to thick, back to thin. Okay, because this type of line work is a lot more aesthetically pleasing than line work that is just the same all the way across. So a lot of beginners will do their, their line work like the same all the way across. But if you look at more advanced artists, they will do their line art with many different weights, which makes it a lot more interesting to look at. So part of my line art layer, I'm going to add some texture. But as soon as you outline eyebrows, it tends to look like they're drawn on, especially like right now I made it so dark that it almost looks like, doesn't look like him anymore. So you have two types of erasers in Medibang. You have the hard eraser and the soft eraser. So I'm gonna use the soft eraser and start to erase some of these lines. And here's my final piece. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button and share it with a fellow art nerd or teacher. And if you support free quality arts education, subscribe.